Hey guys, welcome to another video. Today I'm going to be doing a GFX tutorial since a lot of you have been requesting it. Um, I already recorded the footage. This is just a voiceover, so I'm just going to be narrating the process. To begin, you're going to need to have Roblox Studio and a pretty decent laptop, computer, anything like that. You're going to want to open up a base plate on Roblox Studio, and I'm. this is all of the other props I've used in other GFXs. I'm just moving it to the side so I have space. Now I'm going to begin by adding in my character that I'm going to be wanting to make a GFX of, and I'm also moving other people that I've used. Now I'm going to go into plugins and use load character. If you do not have this plugin, I'm going to show you how to get it right now. You're going to want to open up Toolbox, and if it's not already open, you go into Home and press Toolbox. Then you're going to search for Plugins and type in Load Character. There are two versions. There's the Pro and then the free version. The Pro costs 25 Robux. You do not need Pro. I just use the normal one. Works great. Now you're going to either type in or paste in the username, and make sure you click Spawn at Origin and R6. If you choose R15, the clothing and body is going to load in incorrectly into the 3D rendering software. Now I'm going to be rotating the character 180 degrees. I like to do it in here rather than in Blender because you can get the exact 180 degrees a lot easier in Roblox Studio. Now I'm going to be deleting the face off of the character and what you're going to do to do this is click on the character's torso area and then it'll open up on the right hand side, then open up the drop down, then find head, and then the face, and then you just click delete on your keyboard to get rid of it. Once you have done that, you're gonna open up toolbox on the left hand side and open up the images tab, and then look up whatever you would like to put on your avatar's face. To apply it, do exactly what I did by having the orange box highlight over the head and then click to apply the image there. Now you're going to go into Models and Toolbox again and look up any models you would like to include in your GFX. Here I am choosing a sleeping puppy. Now I'm going to be taking the puppy and just rotating it a little bit and moving it into an easier place to work with. Now you're going to click on the objects and then on the side it'll appear in blue and then you're going to right click that and click export selection. You're going to save this into a folder. You can make a new folder. I'm using a folder I already had. And this is so you can import it into your file into Blender. I'm doing this with the character model as well. Now I'm going to be exiting Roblox Studio. You can choose to save this or not. I always do for some reason, but you don't need to. Now I'm going to be downloading Blender. I will leave a link in the description to this site, but make sure you download 2.82. I cannot stress this enough. If you don't download this version, it's not going to be the same. Now I'm going to be downloading the rig. This is for the woman body. It just makes it easier to work with the joints and stuff. A window is going to pop up like this. Do not click anything on it. It might have a virus. Don't do it. When you click the download button, it is downloading, not the separate window that pops up. Now I'm going to be checking what folder the rig has been saved into. I always put it in my GFX folder. Once you have moved it, you need to right click on the file and extract it because it is zipped. Once you have done that, you are going to need to find this file in your computer and it'll usually be in this folder titled rig. You are going to open up that folder just like this and click on default. This will open Blender if you have it installed correctly and it will wind up looking a little bit like this. Here we go. So this is the basic interface for Blender. On the left hand upper corner, those are your controls. To move around, you are going to press Shift and F on your keyboard and you can move around however you want, and as you see, I just pressed shift to go a little faster. I am now clicking and dragging to select a bunch of parts. You are going to need to delete all of the parts in the head, as we don't need them because they have the weird eyes and mouth in them. Now I'm just moving so I can view it easier. Now you're going to click on the torso, and then up at the top, you see me open shader editor. You are now going to zoom in into this orange box and this will 
have you edit the texture. You are going to want to go into that folder you made before and you are going to find the username of the model you have saved. That is the picture texture of your model and you need to apply it to this rig. Now we are going to be changing some of the settings of our GFX to change the output. The first tab you are going to be opening is the third one from the top and making sure that your render engine is set to cycles. Then you are going to scroll down to performance, open it up, and change the tiles. This just makes the amount of tiles in your final GFX smaller or larger, I believe. Don't quote me on this, but the lower I set it, I tend to get less fuzziness in the final picture. Now you are going to be opening up the next tab. This is the one right below it, and you are going to change the resolution to whatever you would like. I tend to do 1920 pixels by 1920 pixels as it is a square and Instagram's posts are a square. Lastly, you're going to go into the final tab and select denoising. To import the rest of the avatar, you are going to need to go to file, import, then wavefront.object. Then you're going to select the avatar from the same folder you had it in, then select split by group under the geometry tab. Now you are going to need to move the avatar slightly out of the way so you can delete the unnecessary body parts. You need to delete both arms, the torso, and the legs as it is already on the rig behind it. To select multiple body parts, you are going to shift click and once you have selected all of the parts, just press delete on your keyboard. Now what I'm doing is selecting the head, earrings, hair, and butterflies and moving them back into place onto the rest of the body. Then I'm going to be changing my view just to make sure everything looks good. And then once I've done that, I'm just going to click and get out of move mode. Now I'm going to be importing the dog object the same way as before, still making sure that geometry split by group is on. Then I'm going to be using the move tool to move him or it into my line of sight. Once I have done this, it is time to begin posing. To pose your avatar, you are going to need to begin by selecting everything, going into edit, operate a search, and looking up origin, and you're going to set the origin to geometry. This means that you can pivot the object from the point of the object rather than around the center of the entire 3D area of the program. Now you're going to click on one of these shapes around a part of the body and then switch to the rotate tool. If you do not switch to the rotate tool and instead use move, that's going to happen and bodies don't really work like that, so don't use that tool. Unless it's fully part of your project you're doing. Now using the rotate tool, you're going to click on one of the three lines, blue, green, or red, or just click inside the circle to move it around. This is the posing process. It can take a while, seeing as you have to mess with all the joints, but most of the joints work exactly how the human body works. Now I'm just going to be click quickly going through the posing process. You have to be a little creative and shifty with this. As you can see, the arm looks a little far back, so this is when I would use the move tool, but normally I wouldn't use the move tool because if you move it too far in a certain direction, it will look a little funny if the arm's suddenly sticking out of the hip joint or something. But another thing I like to pay attention to is if the arm or something like that is intersecting the hair. As you can see like this, I try to move around the hair, but it is kind of difficult to do so. I decided to cut ahead to when I was done because it did take a while, but I think you guys can figure out how to work with the joints. Now I'm going to this website. I will leave it in the description as well. It has a bunch of high quality 360 degree photos you can use for your GFXs. They are wonderful backgrounds and they are all free to download as far as I'm aware. If some of them aren't, don't come after me. But here I am just selecting one that I think works well with my GFX. And then once I pick one, I'm going to download it. There are always four to five, maybe six different options to use here. When it comes to downloading, 
I always choose 8K because it works well, does the job, and if you chose bigger, it might be a lot of space to use. So 8K works great for me and my GFXs. That's always what I use. Now, just don't mind this message here. I just forgot to move something into a proper folder or it just didn't take that I deleted it yet. Now I'm moving the image I just saved off of the website into the same GFX folder. Now I'm going to be going into this tab, the red one actually, not this one, and going to surface, then use nodes, and then on color, there's a little circle to the right of it, and you are going to be clicking on environmental texture. Then it's going to ask you to open up a file. This is when you will use your image. You are just going to pop it right in there, and it'll be there when you open up a different window. To see your GFX with the background, just click this circle right here. It may lag a lot or take a second, but here it is. As you can see, the dog, my, and my hair of for the GFX have gone transparent. This is where you go into texture at the bottom. It's that little circle that has the checkered pattern. And then do alpha and then switch to image texture and it should come back to full opaqueness and then you're going to do the same with the hair or any other accessory doing that normally if you do one of the accessories all of the accessories come back oh yeah sorry for the bit of lag there but as you can see the head is a little discolored it's not really an issue I don't know why it did that but in the final product it didn't change anything now we are going to be adding in our light source here you are going to push shift A, then light, and then sun, and then move it around like I am now. It's always good to match up your lighting with the picture because if it looks like the lighting is coming from a totally different direction, it'll look a little funny and the shadows will be off. And then you're going to be using the rotate tool to move that little line around. This is the path of light, and I always try to point it on my subjects. I chose to point it more at the dog so I could get a little more lighting on the side of the avatar's face. Now I'm going to be changing the color to a warmer color as we are outdoors and the sun looked to be bright and yellow. And then I'm changing the brightness to about a 6 to make it a little brighter. And as you can see, this is what the image looks like with the lighting. Now what I'm going to be doing now is going into... Add again with shift A and adding in a camera. To change the view of the camera, I always click on camera view on the right side. It's the tool underneath the little hand. Sorry, it just lagged again. It is pretty laggy. And then to move your camera around, just use shift and F and you can move the camera around to wherever you'd like. Once again, my footage got a little laggy. Sorry about that. It's just hard to run against this very strong 3D rendering software. But I just move around until I have a good take on the subject in the background. I finally got the camera to a good place and it's very pixelated because every time you move it has to re-render. So every time you move it will get very pixelated. Now it's time to render. For some reason it froze again, but you're going to click render and then click render image and it'll pop up with this tab. It will take a while, sometimes it can take up to two hours to render or longer depending on how detailed and how many pixels you have to render. But it'll start with these little squares in the center and work outward in a spiral motion. Eventually you will get an image like this. It took mine, um, I think five minutes. I think that's actually pretty fast. Now you're going to save it into your folder as a picture and once you have done that you have a finished gfx now you can close out of this tab and as and out of blender as well i didn't save this one just because there's no real reason to never really see a reason to go back into them because you have to re-render the whole thing and you can't really edit it that well but on that note um, thank you all for watching. I hope this GFX tutorial helped all of you that were requesting it on my Instagram. Once again, sorry for the audio being so sketchy. I'm literally holding 
the microphone from some Apple headphones and I change the distance. It is from my head a lot, so the audio does come out pretty unbalanced. But once again, thank you so much for watching. If this was helpful or you liked it, go ahead and like it. Once again, if you didn't, then don't or, or dislike it. Um, subscribe if you haven't, please. I'd appreciate it. Thank you. I keep saying thank you. But anyway, have a wonderful day. Bye!